Hi, it's Bruce, and welcome to my Colorado lab. And um, today we're going to take a look at a Hewlett Packard 465A wideband amplifier. Uh, this is a uh, basically um, audio to um, low AM band. Uh, we've got 5 hertz to about 1 megahertz uh, bandwidth. And um, selectable uh, 20 or 40 dB gain, so we can go times 10 or times 100 in gain. Um, they're very uh, useful little devices to have on the bench if you're um, trying to probe around and measure uh, small voltages, uh, something in the, uh, the range of um, uh, less than a millivolt, say. You're going to have a problem on, uh, on a great many meters, especially in the AC signal. And the same thing on a scope. Um, and we're going to demonstrate what we talk about here. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and hook this thing up to a scope. And we're going to take the input. The input is coming from this attenuator. And we're going to run that to the amplifier. Now the attenuator's input back here comes around and comes to this low harmonic distortion source. It's just a nice little signal source that I built. Um, uh, it is low in distortion, um, uh, really nice clean signal. So good to use that. And uh, we're using the attenuator to drop our voltage down to those levels where we are talking about being below a millivolt. And we're going to see what that does to us. Okay, so to begin with, uh, oh, the other thing we're going to do is um, I've got my uh, Hewlett Packard 34401 and we're going to hook that up so that we take a look here at the, the ground goes to the ground and then we're going to take this um, input lead and we'll take a look at the signal strength going into the amplifier and then we'll take a look at what's happening on the output. There we go. Okay, so we're going to uh, put ourselves so that we're triggering off a of channel 1 which is the input side of the wideband amplifier coming from the attenuator and we're looking at that top fuzzy signal there. I am on 5 millivolts per division. We're going to see if we can uh, trigger off of that. Ooh, almost. You know, we got, it. we got something there and it's trying to trigger off of it, but it can't hold still and it's fuzzy. I mean, I can't really, I can't read anything reliable, but I mean, from here it kind of looks like maybe I'm getting uh, a millivolt peak on that signal. Now let's take a look at the uh, at the meter reading. I'm getting 0 .44, 0 .44 millivolts AC and that's RMS. Our scope reads peak. So let's uh, let's just take a look at that. We've got um, we've got uh, 0 .443 divided by 0 .7071 and we get about 0.6265 or 0.63, we'll say 0.63 millivolts because that's a millivolt reading. So 0.63 millivolts. So we're not even getting a millivolt on that thing. If I now take a look at the output and we put the output on channel 2 and lock ourselves in okay all right so what we see now is a um, we are on 50 millivolts per division so we're up 50 60 millivolts six, somewhere between 60 and 70 millivolts is what we're reading I guess if I uh, drop that down to 20 millivolts. We can go 20, 40, 60, and looks like 62, something like that. And we said 62 
0.626 millivolts. So um, we are right now, let's put this on times 10. All right. All right, that fuzzy looking signal on channel two is has amplitude that I can read compared to channel one. We are on five millivolts per division. We're five, six, uh, between six and seven millivolts, um, which if you divide by 10 would say we're between 0.6 and 0.7, and we had 0.63 as our reading. Uh, if I switch now from times 10 to times 100, and we take a look at the scope, we see that we got a We've got to go upscale now because we're just overdriven. And try to find the quietest spot. That's about it right there. And we see that we are uh, at 50 millivolts per division. So 50, between 60 and 70 millivolts. And we are again 0 0.62 times, times 10 excuse me, times 100 would be about 62, 63 millivolts. So uh, you can see that the, uh, the readout is much clearer. We're stable compared to the original channel. If we go back to channel one and try and, and, uh, and take a look at it and lock off of it, we can't, we can't trigger properly, we're jittery. Um, jumping around and it's very fuzzy and it's very small so that's useless and if we go then to uh, our output of our amplifier which is a hundred times greater right now and we try and lock on it which we can do we've got a nice signal and I can put both of them up there so you can see them together so that was good and our, our reading, uh, we're 0.43 going in RMS, and right now we're 44.5 millivolts coming out. So 0.4 to 44, that's a factor of about 100. So we're 100 times greater. So now, if I was probing around in the circuit, and... Um, I couldn't couldn't use my scope uh, at that low level. I can multiply it by a hundred, and now I've got something that's readable, and uh, I know what the multiplication factor was, so I can always determine what my voltages really were, and what and yet I can still see them. So there, you get a real good idea what the utility is of the thing, and it's working good. Uh, we are. We'll demonstrate the uh, 20, 40 dB gain once again. All right, here we're on 20 millivolts per division on channel 2. Let's make that just channel 2. And uh, we see we're up 1 and we're down 1, so we're 20 millivolts. Um, if I go to 40 dB, which is times 100, I now see that I've gone way beyond my scale, so I go up to 0.2 volts per division, and we're up one and down one. So, and look at how clean and clear that uh, that trace is now. So uh, that's a factor of a, a hundred. We're ten times greater than we were when I was in the 20 dB position, which looks like that, unless I reduce my scale to read it again. So there we are. So we're getting a real nice times 10 times 100 uh, dependable uh, gain. And uh, that's really uh, useful to us for uh, working within our circuits. So we're going to make our meters read better. We're going to make our scopes read better. And um, this again within the uh, 5 hertz to 1 megahertz range for this particular amplifier.
Okay, so we've got the 465A connected. The input from that Raycal Dana sweep generator that's up there. And I'm sweeping uh, from, oh, I don't know, roughly a hertz to about a megahertz at a high rate of speed. And displaying it, taking the output from the, uh, the unit and displaying it on uh, this Tektronix 2465. I'm going to try and turn down the screen a little bit here make it a little easier to see but what we've got I don't know if you can see these brakes drifting by but that marks the uh, beginning the end and the beginning of a sweep and uh, basically what you can notice is that we are uh, if, you know a rectangle basically of, of light um, up and down one division and that's at 0.5 volts per division, so uh, we're reading uh, about a volt peak to peak. Um, and the input is on the lower channel here, and it also is one division up and down, but it's uh, 5 millivolts a division, so that's 10 millivolts. So 10 times 10 millivolts would be 100 millivolts, times um, uh, 10 would be... Um, a thousand millivolts which is one volt so we've gone from 10 millivolts to one volt it's a gain of a hundred and uh, and you'll notice that the input and the output are the same shape over the entire sweep so the uh, the Hewlett Packard is performing beautifully uh, over its frequency range so I hope I've uh, given you a good idea as to uh, how this unit is uh, is of use on the bench. Um, I use it for my scope. I use it to uh, boost up signal strength for my uh, frequency counter when I'm interested in reading the frequency of a very low voltage signal. Uh, use it for my uh, uh, Hewlett Packard readings if I want to read something very small uh, or my other meters. Um, it's a useful tool, and it's uh, it's all wrapped up into a nice package. I mean, it's it's not very big. I mean, we're talking, I don't know, ten inches long, maybe three inches, two to three inches high, and about four inches or so, five inches wide, four and a half. And uh, it's already got the uh, the gain switch, it's got the power switch, it's got all of your outputs and inputs connected, it's in a really nice case. It's good looking, we're fused, so we're protected, we've got the uh, cord. Uh, so would I be able to build something like this uh, with an op amp uh, circuit, uh, circuit board that I could pick up? Sure. But then I'd have to build all of this. I'd have to build the box, I'd have to uh, mount the board, I'd have to put in all of the inputs and outputs, the power supply, the, the whole bit. Uh, this is already done. So you got to think about that. If you really, if you want the, um, the pleasure of, of a project, then for heaven's sake go ahead and do it. Uh, you know, I do that myself a lot. Um, but uh, if what you want is a, uh, a good tool on your bench that's already put together for a reasonable price, then this is it. So there you go. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you again later. Bye.